boys and girls, welcome to our choral service. Let us join and sing the opening choral, O Come All Ye Faithful. O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold the born God King of Ages, O come let us adore Him, O come let us adore Him. his love among us. He sent his only son into the world that we have life through him. Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels. And in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child and let us make this time glad with our carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity within the church which he came to build, for those who lead in our church and our world. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick in body and in mind, and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who do not know the Lord. Finally, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope in the Word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. We'll now have the first lesson from Genesis chapter 3. We'll be reading from verses 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. A reading from the 
book of Genesis, chapter 3, beginning at verse 8. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all days of your life. I will put empty between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life and thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground for out of it you were taken you are dust and dust you shall return this is the word of the lord thanks be to god We'll now have a selection. We'll now listen to the second lesson from Genesis 22, verse 15 to verse 18. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. The Word of the Lord. And now we'll have a selection.
The third lesson from Isaiah 9, beginning at verse 2 and from verse 6 to 7. A reading from Master of God's Word, according to the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2 and then verse 6 to 7. The people were that walk in a darkness, they'd see one great light. The one them where they live in a land of deep darkness, upon them the light did shine. For a child did bound to we. We get one boy pitney, a charity rest upon him shoulder, and him name Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In authority go and grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. Peace without end for the throne of David and his kingdom. Him I go establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts, I go do this thing. This are the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We now have a selection.
let us listen to the fourth lesson from the Gospel of according to Luke chapter 1, 26 to 35 and verse 38. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 35 and verse 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are treated to another selection.
lesson from Luke chapter 2, reading from verses 1 and 3 to 16. A reading from the Word of God written in Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now have a selection. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And in the lonely manger, our humble Christ was born, and God sends us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. Let us listen to the sixth lesson from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 12.
a reading from the Word of God, written in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The wise men visit Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. This happened while Herod was king of Judah. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the child who has been born to the king of the Jews? When we were in the east, we saw his star. Now we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about it, he was very upset. Everyone in Jerusalem was troubled too. So Herod called together all the chief priests of the people. He also called the teachers of the law. He asked them where the Christ was going to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, this is what the prophet had written. He said, but to you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are certainly not the least among the, the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called for the wise men secretly. He found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go, make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, bring me a report. Then I can go and worship him too. After the wise men had listened to the king, they went on their way. The star they had seen when they were in the east went ahead of them. It finally stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures. They gave him gold, incense, and myrrh. But God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So they returned to their country on a different road. This is the word of the Lord. We are now going to have another selection.
the seventh lesson from the Gospel of John chapter 1 and we'll be reading from verses 1 to verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Word of the Lord. Jesus 
Let us pray. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to share a brief story with you. There was once a girl by the name of Tia. Tia lived with her caregiver. Her caregiver was very unkind to Tia. Most days Tia was sad. Her caregiver was quite mean. And Tia made a plan. She's gonna run, she was going to run away. And she did. She ran away from her caregiver. The more Tia got away from home, the more she got deeper and deeper into the jungle. And one day, she came across a big, a big male lion. And the lion roared. Tia was so frightened, she tried to run away. But she sprained her ankle and she fell to the ground. When Tia realized what had happened to her, she sat up and she was holding her ankle and she felt the pain running all up her leg. And then, to her surprise, she saw the big male lion coming towards her slowly. Her heart was beating, her heart was racing, but she noticed something. The lion was walking on three legs. Only three legs. She noticed that one of the legs, it was bleeding. On one leg in particular, it was bleeding right in the area of the paw. And she noticed as the lion was coming slowly to her, that the lion was not angry at her, but the lion was roaring because the lion was in pain. She saw the paw was swollen and bleeding because there was a long thorn that got caught right in between the toes of the paw. And so the lion was coming to her wounded, wanting help. The lion was roaring because the lion was in such great pain. The lion kept coming to Tia because the lion wanted help. The lion was tired of being in pain. Tia slowly, her hands were shaking, but she slowly went to the lion's paw and she removed the thorn from the lion's paw. The lion winched and growled because he felt the pain. But then the lion slowly started to lick his paw, trying to soothe his paw from the pain. Ever since that moment, that lion never left Tia's side. The lion would go out and hunt and eat, but always came back to be right beside Tia. The lion slept beside Tia. The lion even played with Tia. Nowhere Tia could go, the lion would not find her and spend time with her. But unfortunately, one day some soldiers were roaming the jungle and the soldiers had this practice to grab people who are not supposed to be in the jungle and throw them into prison. So the, the soldiers caught Tia and the lion, captured them both and threw them in prison. Now the reason for this, the emperor in the city had a big sport. The entire city loved this sport. What was the sport? They would bring prisoners into the arena, into the stadium, and they would allow wild animals to tear them apart to kill them and the people would jump with great shouts and joy and say yes we want to see more of this and the emperor loved this big sport so the soldiers had a plan they would starve this lion they would not feed for days and they would let this lion be so hungry that this lion would become very very ravenous angry ready to tear anything apart it so happens that the big day was coming and on the big day the emperor went and sat in his chair where he had the best view. There were hundreds of people there shouting and cheering ready for action. The first prisoner was Tia. They took her and placed her in the middle of the arena. Now the lion was somewhere else and they brought the lion and the lion was very hungry and very angry. And they let the lion loose and the lion came out of this cage 
charging at Tia with great anger in the lion's eye. But the closer the lion got to Tia, the closer the lion realized at some point in time, this is somebody I know. When the lion was just a few steps away from Tia, the lion stopped and he looked at her and his memory started to play. He remembered her. He remembered what she did for him. He remembered the moment he was in pain. He remembered the moments when he would play with her. The moments when he would sleep by her side and be comforted. And the lion slowly walked up to Tia and started to lick her fingers. And then he would rub his face in her side, right by her hip. The lion loved Tia. The emperor was shocked. How can this be? Send her to me immediately. And so the soldiers found a way to separate Tia and the lion once more and brought Tia to the emperor. And the emperor said, what has happened? Explain yourself. When Tia told the emperor the story of how she met this lion and the relationship that they have formed together, the emperor was so moved that he allowed Tia and the lion to be set free so that Tia and the lion could take care of each other for the rest of their lives. Friends, boys and girls, I tell you this story because this story highlights a big, big, powerful theme, and that's the theme of love. The last Sunday of Advent, that was a theme, the theme of love. But that theme doesn't stop with the last Sunday of Advent. It carries all the way through into the season of Christmas. You see, Christmas is about God's love for us all. You know, John, in the Gospel of John, John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son. God loves you and I so much that he sent baby Jesus to live like us, to grow up like a little child and become an adult, and then to give himself for you and I, so that we can be in good relationship with God. God loves us so much, and God loves Jesus, and Jesus came to bring us together with God. In that story, that lion and Tia had a very loving relationship. They cared for each other. And no matter what happened, no matter how hungry the lion may be, no matter the obstacles that would come in their way, the challenges, the fear, the hurt, the pain, nothing would separate them because that love always remained deep within their hearts. Christmas is a time for us to remember this loving story of how God loves us. And no matter what happens in our world, God cares for us. And God wants the best for you and I. And that's why the church, that's why the world, we spend this time to remember Christmas. It's all about love and practicing compassion, empathy, practicing the things of love in our world, caring for others, caring for all living creatures, all living creatures of God. I want to close by reminding you also of another person who came to this understanding. His name was Paul, St. Paul, the great Paul that we read about in scriptures. He wrote, I believe in Romans chapter eight, he said he was convinced that nothing in the world, nothing at all can separate us from the love of God. And I want to remind you that Paul made it his duty once to kill Christians. He hated Christians. He wanted to get rid of all of them. And when he was converted to become a Christian himself, and he began to learn more about God, he became very convinced that nothing, nothing at all, not even death, can separate you from God's love. So we celebrate Christmas to remember this great love. God so loves us that he sent Jesus into the world. And the love story begins here. I want you to remember the story of Tia and this lion. This lion loved Tia. He knew that when he was with Tia, everything would be all right. The lion put aside his anger and pain because his love for Tia was his focus. And he knew Tia was one who would care for him. 
As we go through this Christmas season, I want you to practice love. Can you care for someone? Can you show love to someone who needs love at this time? And also God's creatures, animals too. Do you care for the animals around you? Do you show them love? They're able to know what love is. Love is not only for human beings. Can you bring more love into this world? And this is so needed right now, especially as we are looking forward to say goodbye to 2020 and hello to 2021. Can we bring the theme of love from this moment on into the new year? My brothers and sisters, boys and girls, I wish you all the love of Christ as we celebrate this season, this season of love. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I personally want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May the love of Christ be with you for now and forevermore, you and your family, this day and forevermore. Amen. Our closing carol, Joy to the World.
May God the Father bless and keep us. May Jesus the Son shine his light upon us. And may God the Holy Spirit give us peace this Christmas tide and forever. Amen. Greetings everyone. My name is Reverend Natalie Blake. I am the Director of Christian Education in the Department of Education and Youth. 2020 has been the year of innovation when we reached out to our children and their families in new ways. We extend our heartfelt thanks to all our teachers, students, parents and guardians and members of clergy who joined together to produce the programs that ministered to our church family. We thank our presenters who hosted online Sunday school and all the children who participated in the lessons. Get the fun and laughter of Vacation Bible School. Welcome, boys and girls, to Vacation Bible School! Yay! I'm Uncle Chris, and this is Auntie Andrea. And we have played for us today Uncle Dijon! Hi, boys and girls, I'm Auntie Catherine. And I am Uncle Kirk. Place we go, he will stand with us and he will give us the courage. And of course, our Advent preparations were ably facilitated by Father Khan and Reverend Marjorie. Happy New Year! Welcome to our online Sunday school session. As we conclude the activities for this year, we extend our thanks to our team of editors, Mrs. Clavia Watson-Reed and Captain Christopher Givens, who worked tirelessly to add the magic to all our presentations. As we journey together as one family, we pray God's hope, peace, joy, and love for everyone this Christmas tide and throughout the new year. Bye!